You know, one of the pictures that excited me probably as much or even more than the the deep field is the picture of um, the exoplanet. What is it? The oh. uh, uh, the wasp wasp ninety six B right ninety six B. Now it the only picture that I've actually seen is it's very fuzzy and imposed over it is the 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 trail that they've seen where they were managed to find water vapor yeah. in the in the atmosphere. But still, a fuzzy picture of a planet that exists in another solar system somewhere else <laughs> is just God. incredible to me. I mean that that to me is more exciting than anything else that there's a, even if it's not inhabited by anything, there's another planet in another solar system and we have proof, right? Don, I, I am going to ruin your day. I I'm sorry. I, I do oh. apologize in advance. That's not a real image of this planet. That's, <laughs> that's an artist <laughs> concept. Yeah, they are hoping to see that the, the web is not really designed to directly show us pictures of exoplanets, worlds going around other stars. There's another tool that we hope is going to be launched in four or five years, uh, the Nancy Grace Roman Telescope, which is actually will be able to do that, you know, fingers crossed. What you're looking at there, uh, because the web can't see an individual exoplanet, the star near it is just too bright. Uh, they, they made up what maybe it looks like. Uh, what, but the real significance here is that squiggly line that shows the presence of water on this planet and that they were able to infer from that that this giant planet that goes around its star every 3.4 days, <laughs> wow, um, it has clouds. It probably has big cloud systems, water, water ice or water clouds. Um, that's it. That's the spectra that they were able to pick up. And they did that because it passes in front of its star and when it does that, the spectra, the splitting of the, the, the light, the electromagnetic radiation that we see as light, mm. it, it changes a little bit when the, when the planet goes in front of the star. And then when the planet goes around the back of the star, it goes back to being just the star, obviously. So when it goes in front of the star, they can look at how that spectrum changes and they can infer what the planet is what the spectrum is from the planet. And that's what you're looking at here. Yeah. So, sorry to say, I, I don't want to burst your, your planetary bubble, but, but uh, yeah, it's going to be a few more years probably before there, there have been a few direct images of some gigantic exoplanets that are not far away, uh, but they're not really very impressive. Uh, you know, just uh, uh, don't hold your breath for that, but it's coming. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I don't, I don't give a darn about the rest of these anyway. But. <laughs> I, I'm well, disappointed now. Yeah, no, no, I don't blame you. Well, the the other impressive picture to me, shifting gears real quick, uh, was the that uh, Carina Nebula. Oh, that man. actually is a very that looks like an, an artistic piece of work. It looks like somebody painted that on. Uh, but that's an actual. That, don't get me wrong. I mean. Is it a painting or is that an actual picture? <laughs> no, no. I have, this is, I have to ask now. <laughs> this is this is the real McCoy or the real McCarran Arena, I guess. Yeah, uh, this is the real thing. And you know, this is someplace else that the Hubble also looked at. Uh, and if again, if you compare the two, and I hope that you got a high res version of this because this image, if you get the original resolution, you can just zoom in and zoom in and zoom in and zoom in, and it just stays incredibly sharp. Um, the big difference here, other than it being so sharp, is that uh, the Hubble, which could only extend a little bit into seeing the infrared. You know, the light that is just outside of our range of vision, right. uh, which we, we can perceive as heat sometimes. Um, the, the JWST was designed to work entirely in the infrared range. And the great thing about infrared and the reason they did this is because infrared lets you look through a lot of gas and dust that you can't do with visible light, the range of light that we see with our eyes. That's why if you zoom in on this, you see these baby stars hiding out inside that cloud, which the Hubble could not see. And they're just everywhere in this cloud. And, and of course, it's the cloud that 
you know, this, this baby star has been formed from. Wow. Uh, and the other thing that was pointed out to me uh, in that show that you heard, John, uh, by uh, the uh, planetary scientist, Tom Green, who mm-hmm. is going to have a couple hundred hours on the web to study exoplanets. He said he loves this, that sharp, that well-defined line at the top of the cloud. And mm-hmm. he said it's there because basically you have the the light of these baby stars, the one you see above the cloud, that are just pushing against that cloud and pushing it back, you know, as if they were wow. blowing on it like a breeze. And and that's formed that 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 really sharp edge to the cloud, which is, you know, we probably not going to look as sharp if you're next to it, but but from this distance, it looks pretty damn great. 